Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a topic we are asked very often when we talk about our lives in Italy and when we do home tours as people try to imagine themselves living here, whether it is for short or long term. Can I be without a car if I move to Italy? And I ask you back, will you want to? As I have mentioned on a previous video, most if not all towns in Italy have a bus service in one way, shape or form. As you would imagine, like in any other country, the frequency and destination of these services will depend on the size of the city or town and the location and the surrounding areas. Sometimes I feel like us foreigners can be very harsh on Italy when it comes down to our expectations on public transport. It's like we want the whole system to revolve around us and the places of interest we want to see. Like, I want a bus or a train that takes me from Rome to Sicily and stops and waits for me while I check out Puglia in the summer. But I want the same bus to take me to the Alps in winter for ski season. You may think I'm exaggerating. If only you knew the things we've heard. Anyway, so imagine a place, any town that comes to mind. Have you picked a town yet? Okay. Most likely this town has a bus service that will take you to the center or the bus terminal of a bigger town. This same bus will stop in a few other towns in the area. So whether you are the first stop or the last stop, it depends on the place you picked. Once you have arrived to the destination of the bus from there, most likely you will have a train station and other bus services to bigger towns and smaller towns that are not on the route of the initial bus you came in. Let's pick our own case for example. There is a bus from our town to Termoli. It stops in two towns before it stops in our town and it stops in another two towns after it stops in ours. The total bus ride from here to Termoli is about 40 minutes. By car, it will be about 20 minutes. Once we arrived at Termoli, we can catch a train from there to Pescara, Rome, Bari, and other places. There are also buses to the capital of Molise, which is Campobasso, to Rome, and even Napoli, and many other mid-side cities. Contrary to what some people may think, timetables are very accurate and buses usually run from Monday to Saturday. They don't run on Sundays or public holidays. You do, however, need to be familiar with the timetable and the bus stop location, and be organized and ready to avoid disappointments, just like you would in any other place. See, and her eyes, do you see her eyes? From our point of view, for the typical foreigner who doesn't have a 9 to 5 job and doesn't have to rush everywhere, the bus frequency of these small towns is adequate. You will be limited though as to when you can go somewhere and depending on where you wish to go, most probably will need to make a few bus or train changes, just like you will in any other country. You happy there? For us though, having a car is a must. It was a must back when we lived in Australia and it continues to be a must here. We need and want the freedom and flexibility that having our own form of transportation gives us. We can decide to go somewhere last minute and having our car ensures that we get there with the least hassle possible. Of course, if we were wanting to go right to the middle of Rome or Napoli, we wouldn't be driving all the way there. But for most things we do, having a car has been fantastic. We do not take having our own car in Italy for granted. For months on end, we didn't have the required documentation to buy one. This made our lives more expensive and difficult, as we were just getting started with our renovations and had to rent a car for about five months. Other people may have different priorities, but for us, it is important to be able to continue to discover this beautiful region and country and with independence that we used to have in Australia, in our own time and with as much ease as possible. Things that only having your own car can give you. 
So you have decided that you want to buy a car in Italy. Great! Let's go through the process. Well, the process itself of purchasing a car is surprisingly simple. The big obstacle is to be in a position in which you have all the documents you require to be able to register your car and insure it. So how to buy a car in Italy? First of all, to be able to purchase a car here, you need a document called Carta d'identità. This is probably the most important document that you will need for the purchase. Without it, you won't be able to complete it. Purchasing a home in Italy does not entitle you to have a carta d'identità. The different ways to obtain a carta d'identità are beyond the scope of this video of our knowledge and experience, since people come to Italy for many different reasons with different visas. So I will leave it here and encourage you to do your own research on how to obtain and take it from there. The first time we purchased a car here was through a dealer. We found the car online using websites such as Auto Scout and Automoto. There are other websites such as Subito and Liber. We were looking for a very particular car for months, even before we had our carta de identità. So once we found the right one, we wasted no time and went to the dealer in Abruzzo did our due diligence and decided to purchase it. At this stage, the dealer asked us for our Carta d'identità, our Codice Fiscale, which is actually written on the Carta d'identità, and we signed the transfer papers there. Keep in mind that the fee to transfer the ownership of the car is the responsibility of the buyer. We had to come back a couple of weeks later as some things were being done to the car upon our request. And during this time, the dealership took care of all the transferring ownership for us. When it comes out to the insurance, we had to make sure we had active insurance prior to driving away from the dealership. By law, you have to do this as it is illegal in Italy to drive an uninsured car. We have a great insurance guy, thank you by the way if you're watching, <laughs> who took care of all this for us. In Italy, there is a tax on cars called Polo. Polo is like what in Australia we call registration or rego. The amount depends on the year of the car, the make, how many cylinders and so many other factors. As this was a car from a dealer, we had a few weeks to pay the bolo. I believe that the first time you pay the bolo, you do it at an office called ACI and the tax is paid for one year. Just to summarize, for this transaction, we needed our Carta d'identità, our Codice Fiscale, we paid the transfer of ownership fee and the bolo fee. And that was pretty much it for this purchase. By the way, for those of us with no driving history in Italy, insurance is very expensive. So make sure you obtain a letter from your insurance back home that states for how many years you have held your policy without claiming. In any case, speak with your insurance person about this but do not leave it to the last minute. The second time we purchased a car was actually very recently, and we found the car through a private ad in one of the websites I mentioned earlier. For us, the person we purchased a car from is as important as the car itself. We need to be able to trust and quickly judge a character, even if only from a phone conversation. Sure, people can fool you, but hey, we need to try our best. After looking for a while and talking to many people, we decided on the one. We contacted the owner, spoke on the phone and felt right about it. So the next day, we traveled last minute to Abruzzo and closed the deal. 
Before I talk you through this process, which was a little different, let me tell you why we needed to buy a second car. In Italy, you can only drive with a license from your home country for one year after you become a resident. From this point forward, you need to change your license to an Italian license. I have discussed this process, which will give you all the background information you need in a different video, which I will link here in the description. Anyway, soon we will become what in Italy it's known as neopatentato, meaning that we will be treated as people who have never ever driven a car. And for these people, there are restrictions as to what type of cars they can drive for one year. So we will only be allowed to drive a car of a maximum 55 kilowatts. This made the search for a car very difficult and, to be honest, uninspiring. Is the clutch like super high? How's the steering? Like a rock? <laughs> we will only be able to drive a car with more kilowatts in the presence of someone who has a full driver's license. Ah, so you have to have the accelerator quite high before it takes off. Yeah. So I think I can go. With that. Okay, so back to our latest purchase. As I mentioned, we found the car, texted with the owner one day, the next day we spoke on the phone and the same day we were off to meet with him and see the car. We test drove it, everything checked out and pretty much on the spot we decided it was the one for us. We had pretty much decided before we arrived to Abruzzo, we just needed to make sure. By the way, before looking at this car, we looked at a couple of other cars. We thought that we wanted an old style Fiat Panda, but after test driving it, we decided against it. Sure, it is cute but they have become so desired that you get very little for your money. And as it will be the only car we will be driving pretty much for a whole year, it didn't feel right to have something this rough. It's super cool. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. I will leave the link on the description. Where was I? Oh, yes. We decided on the car, but it was around midday and the offices where you do the ownership transfer called Achi was about to close. So we had to wait until they opened again in the afternoon. In the meantime, we talked to our insurance guy and got the car checked for theft, accidents and claims and it was all good. In the afternoon, we met again with the owners drove together to the nearest Achi and made an instant bank transfer to pay for the car. While the Achi people did the transfer of registration, which is called Passaggio di Proprietà, most commonly known as Passaggio. Here we didn't have to pay for Bolo, as the owner had paid it a couple of months ago and it was still okay for the next 10 months. But we had to pay for the transfer of registration. This amount was a lot less than what we paid for our first purchase since the car is just different. If I remember properly, for this car, we paid about 450 euros to transfer the ownership. And Bolo next year for this car also should be around 200 euros. The whole process at the Achi office took about 30 minutes. It was painless. 
Here, we will only ask for our identity card, and that's all. Your identity card has your address as well as your college fiscale on it. So I guess that's all they needed. They took a copy of it, made us fill in a form, et voila. We were the proud new owners of a cute Volkswagen Polo. For this transaction, we needed to provide our identity card and pay the transfer of registration fee. After transferring the registration, we had to wait until the insurance papers were ready. Remember, you cannot drive away uninsured. So our insurance person took care of it, and once we were ready, we came back to Melissa. Finally, and sadly enough, the insurance of the Polo is almost as expensive as the insurance of the Land Rover. Again, as we have no driving history in Italy and couldn't get our insurance letters back from Australia, as I mentioned earlier, we were staffed and had to go ahead insuring the cars without it. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much to our patrons for their generosity. Your extra support is really appreciated. Please consider watching this video. I'm sure you'll find it entertaining and informative. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Ciao!